Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is just to help you get your day off to a great start as we spend a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so, if you've been with us in recent weeks, you know that we are working our way through the Gospel of Matthew. And so my hope is that every morning, we will read one chapter of Matthew together. And so we've been working our way through and we're now up to Matthew chapter 22. So I hope when we're all done, you will take the time to read the whole of Matthew chapter 22. There's a lot of important stories in it, teachings. And so I hope you'll take the time for that. But for our purposes this morning, for, for this lesson, we're gonna look at one particular section, verses 34 through 40. And so if you have a Bible handy, or if you want to pull it up on your phone or your phone app, uh, I would invite you to join me in Matthew chapter 22, beginning in verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. So when you read the chapter, you're going to see that the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, were always trying to find a way to trip Jesus up. He tried to get him to say something that, that they could use against him, that he might get him in trouble in some way. And so in this particular case, in this story, in previous stories they ask other questions, but in this particular case they ask a question about the commandments. Right? What is the greatest commandment? Because the thought is that if they could get Jesus perhaps to elevate one of the commandments over the other, then they might have some way of accusing him based on neglecting some of the other commandments. So they're trying to put him in a, in a no-win situation, basically. And they're, they're trying to ask the question. Like, they're like lawyers, basically, right? An attorney that goes to try to ask the question in a way that uh, they implicate themselves, Jesus implicates himself, no matter how he responds, right? And so it's all about wording the question just a certain way and getting them to, to try and say the wrong thing. And so they, they now have been trying to do this for a while, and this other expert in the law, the, the Sadducee, has been trying. Now this Pharisee comes along, and he's an expert, and he's going to try to trip Jesus up. But Jesus, of course filled with the wisdom of God by the Holy Spirit is able to respond. He's always able to find a response. He's always able to say something in a way that silences the religious leaders. And in this case, the key to the wisdom of what he is saying is really found in verse 40. So let's reread that last verse where it says, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So, I don't know if you see what he's done, but by saying the greatest commandment is to love God and love others, he was essentially including all of the commandments. So, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but there were originally ten commandments, right? The ten commandments given by Moses. Right? And so over time, the Jewish leaders, religious leaders, had kind of expounded upon, expanded those commandments to the point where there were now 600 plus commandments in the Jewish law. But they were all based in the original 10. They were all extrapolations on the original 10 commandments. Now of those 10 commandments, the first four commandments are about loving God. Right? Love the Lord your God. Honor Him. Uh, honor the Sabbath. Have no idols before you. Do not take the Lord's name in vain. Those are all part of the original four commandments. They're all about how we love God well. And then the next six commandments 
are all about how we love people. Do not steal. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. Do not be envious, etc., etc., right? Um, and so those were all about people. So what Jesus had basically done is taken what had become this very complex system of rules and regulations and brought it down to something that we can all understand and we can all apply. Love God and love others. So, when you or I are ever in a situation where we're not sure what is the right thing to do in this circumstance, the question we should always be asking ourselves is, what is the loving thing, right? Which choice would reflect a love for God and a love for others? Because those, Jesus says, are the greatest commandments. Now, of course, there will sometimes be situations where it's hard to decide what is the most loving thing, and so we have to seek God in those moments. We have to pray. We have to seek the, the guidance, the wisdom, and the discernment of the Holy Spirit to know what is the better path when it seems like there are different paths that all reflect in some way love for God and love for others. So we will have to be discerning sometime, but the foundation of it is still the same. We seek to choose that which loves God and loves others. In those moments when we're not sure, we can be prayerful, we can be discerning. If we're listening carefully, I believe God will speak to us and he will guide us and he will give us the answer we need so that we can live our lives loving God and loving others. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this passage. I thank you for the wisdom of Jesus and the ways that he explains and answers these difficult questions. And I love the fact, Lord, that he's able to take this complex religious system and bring it down to something so simple, something we can all understand and apply. Love you and love other people. And so help us, Lord, to do that well in our own lives. Help us to reflect that in all that we do and say that others might see the love of Jesus in us and be drawn towards you. I thank you and I praise you for this wonderful story. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.